Right, everyone. Uh, you know how I said that the game review videos would be shorter, sort of lighter, you know, a bit more, bit more improvisational, a bit less scripted than the um, than the main videos. It's really funny that my first review video came out to be like thirty minutes long, but I mean, it's Fallout New Vegas. There was a lot to talk about, right? So, uh. Still, people seem to like it, so we're back with another review, and today I thought I'd talk about Suzerain. Now, Suzerain, you may not have heard of it, right? If you've found your way here through the usual things, basically my Twitch stream or my Twitter, you'll know that I have a bit of a thing for this game. I can't get enough of it. I particularly enjoy one character. Everyone enjoys this one character, to be fair. but. I thought it would be worth, as a review, thinking about why exactly I seem to have fallen in love with this game. A game that I only really played because someone randomly recommended it to me. Someone went, well, here's a game, it looks like, you know, it's a politics game, you might enjoy it. And it turned out I did enjoy it, and there might be some reasons why that's the case. So that's what we're going to be doing here today. We're going to be thinking about Suzerain, why Suzerain works, you know. We're going to try and talk about the game, exactly what this game is, what the good design choices were that made this game something that I enjoyed so much, and how this game makes you care about the characters in it. Because if we're talking about a narrative game, you need to make people care about it. And I feel strongly about the characters in Suzerain. We'll do the usual thing, we'll put some clips of me playing the game on stream as we go, but otherwise, I'm gonna get on with this. So let's see what exactly made me fall in love with Suzerain. I should also say, just before we start, that there might be spoilers as I go through this. I'm not quite sure, the script is kind of rough, and, well, there's no script, it's just a series of bullet points, but it's kind of rough, and, I may say some story critical things as we go through, so just be aware that this is not a spoiler free zone, it's not likely that I'll spoil anything important, but it's not impossible, so in case you're going to get mad at me, uh, go play the game, go play the game, genuinely go play the game, come back and then listen to the video, or watch the video, you watch the video, watch the video. What is Suzerain? Like how do you play the game? What is the game? How do you play it, right? It's a narrative game that mostly takes place in the fictional country of Swordland. And we will definitely talk about Swordland a bit later because it is a very, very interesting and good setting and a good choice, by the way, to set it in a fictional country. And you assume the role of the fourth president of Swordland, Anton Rain, and you are presented with a series of events and decisions that ultimately determine what kind of president you are and what your ultimate fate is as president of Swordland. Now, the main interface for the game is this nicely designed map. You know, it's got an outline of the country, it's got the regions on it, it's got your neighboring countries on it, and it has several important cities on it. And most of the game takes place by interacting with the map and clicking on pieces of information that come up or events that are highlighted with an exclamation mark. So, for example, these events can range from, you know, a party at your friend's house, a movie premiere, to, you know, going to another country to negotiate a trade deal. Yes, you, you do deals. You do tremendous deals, some might say. The ultimate aim of the game is to navigate Anton through his first term as president and hopefully get him a second term as president and do it without destroying all of his personal relationships and, you know, ruining his family and ruining his friends. At, or, you know, it's a spoiler alert, getting done for um, corruption, which can happen, which is one of the funniest ways to get caught in the game because you essentially catch yourself. But anyway, look, that was a big spoiler for some of you. Just, I told you, not spoiler free. Don't get mad at me, right? Now, a lot of this game is, it's text, it's walls of text. So if you don't like walls of text, you're gonna struggle with it a little bit. Luckily, the game can be played at its own pace. 
so you know you don't have to rush through reading it i happen to play it a lot on stream so i do kind of rush through and also i'm impatient and to be honest not a very strong reader so we kind of power through the written bits of it but it looks good it's presented clearly so yeah that's the game you are the president you have become the president and anton's story we'll get into a bit more in a little bit but it is a very interesting background because you have an element of control over it and that does impact some of your ability to do certain things in the game it is meaningful but it's not such massive free roaming command of the story that you know it writes itself into several corners and ends up doing and i keep slagging it off the mass effect multicolored ending issue i want to take a minute here to talk about the setting swordland and i think that it was an exceptional choice on the part of the developers to make the setting something that everyone can project onto so i've seen swordland compared to Turkey, Latin America, particularly Argentina, Germany, and Italy at various points. And to be honest, to an extent, Britain, but there's a very specific bit that compares to Britain and they didn't exactly hide it. So the Turkey comparison specifically speaks to me. Now you might say, well, SK, your parents are Turkish. Might that be why you are able to connect so well with the obvious Turkey analogs? And I would say, Yes, but other people have produced different interpretations of Swordland, so clearly this is a setting that speaks to a lot of different analysis and history, and I would say that Swordland, while it has many obvious parallels with Turkey, that Turkey has a lot of obvious parallels with Latin America and Italy and Germany, you know, maybe a bit less so, a bit of a different kind of history at play with Germany, although some elements are similar. And while I understand, and I, by the way, I can understand these comparisons to other countries because they do make sense, and these parallels that exist between Turkey and these other countries helps me to understand why people see it that way it makes sense you're not bad because you don't see the parallels because you might not know about the things i'm about to talk about but the parallels between swordland and turkey are interesting so first of all you have left right violence in the form of the red youth which i think is a reference or people have told me is a reference to the red army faction which was a german far left group but obviously it's similar in character to Turkish equivalents that did exist, particularly from the 60s onwards. There were equivalent groups that existed in Turkey. You can take my word for it. Uh, go look up uh, Go look up the left-right violence in Turkey. And there's a group called the Young Swords, who are an ultra-nationalist group, and they are an obvious reference to the Young Turks. No, not those Young Turks. The Young Turks who did the genocide those young Turks who were themselves ultra-nationalists. And as I said, these two groups engage in violent struggles against each other and the decisions that President Rain makes determines some of the nature of this violent struggle between them. And they obviously both have political wings in the form of the Communist Party of Swordland, which is supposedly connected to the Soviet Union analogue now. I might have turned a blind eye to it in my personal playthrough of it, my first stream playthrough of it, but, you know, we make decisions in this game, that's the important thing, and the political wing for the Young Swords is the National Front, which is a rather unsubtle reference to the British National Front, and the less said about them, the better. There's also an obvious analogue to the Kurds in Turkey, in the form of the Bloods, now, they are jointly oppressed by Swordland and Vechlen, uh, and Vechlen is this kind of Poland slash Iraq hybrid led by an eccentric dictator in the style of a Polish Saddam Hussein who sits on tons of oil. Again, you can see why this setting might grab people who are political in nature. And the other obvious analogue between Turkey and Swordland is the governing party, the USP. The USP is clearly meant to be the Republican People's Party. It's not even close 
to being like hidden. Uh, they even have an ideology based on arrows, the free arrows, and those free arrows are half of the famous six arrows that the Republican People's Party has as its official ideology. I believe the I'm gonna try and remember the USP's free arrows. Two hours later. I believe the three arrows of the USP were republicanism, nationalism, and statism. Uh, that seems about right. I doubt it was any of the other three, because that probably wouldn't work out well, given what the USP is. But anyway, I'll cut that if it's wrong. If it's been left in, I've got it right. So there you go. Um, look, there's no honor here. I'll be honest with you all. There is no honor here. I will cut stuff when I get it wrong. And to be fair, like, I don't think getting the ideology of a fictional political party wrong is the biggest deal. But there's also the matter of Colonel Sol. Tarquin Sol. What a name, Tarquin. Wow, yeah. Oof. Anyway. He asks the question, the character asks this question, what if Mustafa Kemal didn't die of cirrhosis and was allowed to continue as leader indefinitely? Or even allowed to retire after leadership? And while I think the answer that Suzerain provides to that is a misreading of Mustafa Kemal to an extent, I actually think it's a good thing that they're playing with the idea. They're asking a question that a lot of people are quite reluctant to ask and think about, and even more reluctant to provide an answer to. Now we come on to the good design choices. Well, the obvious good design choice is the game has a wonderful looking map as its primary interface. Things are very clear, it's clear where things are happening, if the things are happening off where you're looking, there are arrows at the side of the screen that direct you to the things that are happening. The game presents the events well when you're in your conversations with people and there's a wall of text you're able to see little portraits of each character that's involved in the interaction there just in case you forget who they are you can click on it and then a codec comes up and the codec has you know, the backstory of the character. And the codex not just limited to characters, it's organizations, countries, you know, historical events. And these usually come with a nicely designed flag or logo or something like that. Now I will say that a lot of this is very text heavy. So if you are not the strongest reader, if you need a bit more sort of visual stimulation in a game, this may not be the game for you. It's okay for me, and look, to be fair, if you watch me play it on stream, which you should do, uh, you can tell I kind of power through some of the reading. Now, part of that's because I've played it before on the latest stream. I have played it before, so I am familiar with what's going on. And part of it's because, look, I'm going to be honest with you, I ain't reading all that. <laughs> like, sorry. But no, but seriously, it is well written. It's interesting. And if you're sort of, even if you kind of struggle with it, I would encourage you to sort of take it at whatever pace you like. You're able to take it at whatever pace and you can stop and think and read and enjoy it. I think it's very enjoyable. I think it's well written. I also think this additional design choice is really good. Part of the narrative is presented to you through obviously partisan newspapers. Now, there are some ways to make certain newspapers a certain kind of partisan. Again, spoilers, not going to go there. I was talking about Turkey analogs earlier. I go on and on and on on stream about Radical, the newspaper Radical, which in game is called Radical, is obviously a reference to the Turkish paper Radical, which I sort of describe as a left newspaper, but really is kind of a left liberal newspaper. It's a bit melty, a bit melty, a little bit melty, but I, I just adore the the, the borrowing of the name and the typeface and it just sort of it it makes me feel good seeing it I think it's a really really neat way and quite a direct way by the way to connect Swordland to its obvious real world counterpart and I have mentioned Swordland already but there's a sense as you sort of go through the country go through the story interact more and more with different people that there are genuine different visions for the country now I happen to think a lot of those visions are a load of bullshit look You'd never catch me in the room with the National Front in the game or in real life, to be fair. But they have a genuine vision for the country and they really, really want it, right? Everyone really, really wants it. The old guard want to hold on to power. The reformists want to distribute it. You know, there are, the Supreme Court really, really doesn't want its power challenged. That makes sense, right? The motivations make sense. The Bloods, they want their freedom. You know, they want to be free from the racist oppression that the country puts on them, right? 
it's really really good and the fact that these groups really seem to want their particular vision really invest you in either opposing them or supporting them or trying to appease them or just really trying to get them to shut the fuck up sometimes genuinely that is something that you might have to do in this game it's up to you the game also has really good narrative design nothing comes out of the blue completely right there's a build-up to it if you think you've been surprised by an event stop and think and look back and you might remember that there were little subtle hints that something might have been going on in the background right it's not a total surprise when big events happen i'm particularly thinking about an event that happens with a character that's very close to anton and other characters did make comments about what was going on one of the best narrative design choices is to have an assassination happen at the inaugural ball now that's a spoiler but it does happen very early in the game because it forces players to reconsider what their desires for the country are. I went into the game when I first played it, wanting to be a democratic socialist. You know, my idea was, well, I wanted to play myself. So really I was like, is democracy the easiest way to get to pressing the communism button? And I decided that was probably the easiest way to navigate it, investing power in the people who I will then show the benefits of the left-wing program to, right? That was the trick I was trying to play. Now, whether that would work in real life or not, you know, there's a lot more going on in real life than in can be even presented in a game as detailed as this. But that was what I did. And to be fair, eventually I managed to, I think I got quite a successful ending my first time playing it. But a lot of players will be forced to reconsider what they want for the countries. Because I think a lot of players come in and they want to reform Swordland. They want to make it more democratic because most of us live in countries that at least pose as liberal democracies so that's kind of where our brain will default to but you get a lot of things said to you and pushed onto you and people provide compelling evidence and arguments actually to back up their views the characters really really want you to do what they want you really get that sense so overall i would say the design choices for this kind of game have been really really good and those design choices really help deliver the experience in a way that means that i feel like i should go back and keep playing it and exploring different options and seeing what can happen i mean i'm very very tempted to see where, what can happen if i decide not to do something about a certain character maybe that'll happen on stream maybe not but i would love to see what happens when i do that and that's a sign that this game is designed well enough for me to want to go back to it and that's obviously a good sign well done to the developers again i wanted to think a little bit about how this game makes you care because it's one thing to have all of this good design and all of this good narrative right but that doesn't mean you care right and there are two moments I want to focus on so spoilers for one of them and the other one is just me gushing about a character that I really like so the first one is your vice president Peter Vecton. now he he's a bit of a character he's the bad boy of swordish politics you know a bit of a party animal which you know when you're in your 20s is you know maybe we kind of let that go a bit too much but you know that's just sort of the common attitude to it and bear in mind this game is set in the 50s so there will be different social attitudes being displayed here but when you're like a middle-aged guy and you're still a party animal and you got a wife it, you can see what the problem was here and you have to decide whether you throw him under the bus but the game establishes that you have a deep and long-lasting relationship with them and these characters clearly care about each other this is another case of like not giving the character total control over the backstory really allows you to have a richer story and in my latest stream playthrough i ended up arresting him because he had an affair with my secretary and my secretary turned out to be a spy that's a complete fucking disaster and a spy for a hostile power none you know that's a fucking disaster right and I was playing the dictator route. Now, the first time I played it, I wasn't playing the dictator route. I was playing a kind of half-assed reformist route. And I kind of went, uh, he's going to resign now. But in the dictator route, I decided, you know what? 
I'm going to arrest you and I'm going to put you on trial. And that decision sucked. That's just a sign of good narrative design and making people care about these characters. Another one is obviously Surge. We all love Surge. Look, there's not much to say. He's your driver. He seems like the one character who genuinely fully believes in you who's not a member of your family. You also have the option to pay for his kid's education. I took that option because of course I did. You know, he is undeniably the star of the show. He's such a... If you look at the total amount of like narrative time he occupies, it's so little, but he's so obviously the star of the game that it's unbelievable that this character could just have such a small role but such a massive impact. He almost functions as like your connection to the everyday person in Swordland, but he sincerely and really does believe in you and that's fascinating to me and it makes you just glom onto the character to an extent because it gets tough for Anton. It really, really does. So you've got to, you really do glom onto him a little bit and obviously I'll put in a clip of how we react on stream whenever we see Surge. Are we going to have a Surge moment? Let's see. Um... Alright, okay. Let's just enjoy the night. Surge, he's here, folks! Surge, let's go! Let's get the Surge emote. If you've got Surge emotes, now's the time, everyone. I don't know what the... Surge rolled down the limousine soundproof partition. Surge time, baby. We're here, sir. Hope you enjoyed the drive. Surge, I enjoy every drive. I did, Surge. Fa oh, no. Much appreciated. How are you today? Let's, 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 let's hear about Surge's day. No one ever asks how Surge. It's always where's Surge, never how Surge. And yeah, can you blame us? He's such a great character. We all love Surge here. Official channel position, Surge, based as fuck. So those are my collected thoughts on Suzerain. It's a good game. It's a game I really, really enjoyed. And I was quite surprised by it, to be honest, because as I said, I got randomly suggested that I play this game Suzerain. And I thought, well, it's a narrative game. I'm kind of like narrative games, but it grabbed me. And it grabbed me because of excellent choices well, there was a dude honking his horn outside my window. Let me try that again. It grabbed me because of excellent choices. And there's a lot that we can learn from these choices. And one of those choices that I think was key was not having it be set in a real country, but an analog to, I think, one particular country. But obviously it took elements from several countries. So that's it. Good game. Go get the game, genuinely. I really, really like the devs of this game. They did a really, really good job. They even showed up to my stream and decided to enjoy some of the surge loving that we did in the uh, in the first campaign. So, you know, go check them out. They're good people. And this is an exceptional game. Now, I did forget to specifically shout out some patrons in the last game review, and I am deeply sorry for that. So, uh, this is my apology in that I am going to do it properly now. So everyone, uh, I am very sorry. And here you are, you're on the wall. You're facing the wall in Anton Reign's dictatorship. No, you don't get to do that. Well, you don't get to do it very much. And I particularly want to shout out Drone Riff, Kersey Scheider, Mercutio and Nauseam. Thank you very much. If you join the Patreon at the £1 tier, you will get the game review videos a day early. If you join at £2.50 or above, you get my other sort of the important videos, you know, the ones where I talk about stuff like online piracy, you get them a day early. And at £2.50 or above, you get access to the Discord where I slag people off in secret. Ooh, no, I don't really do that. I just mostly hang out and talk shit about video games. But, you know, all good fun. But with that out of the way, go get Suzerain and tell me about what your favorite playthrough of Suzerain was if you've played it in the comments. Take it easy, everyone. Have a good one.